Yes. May Allah make it easy for you. Inshallah. This person is asking, is a woman or a man? Huh? Okay. May Allah make it easy for you. And yes, Allah has written that into your destiny. You can hope that it may change, but accept that destiny that Allah has given to you and the peace is going to enter into your heart. If you don't accept that judgment, that decision, you may lose your faith. There is a reason, and Allah's reasons are always the best reasons. Whatever happens to you, it is a blessing. Our Grand Shaykh Abdullah is saying, whether it is a good thing or a bad thing, it is a blessing. So, as a person of faith, as a mu'min, you have to understand what that blessing is, and what is the hikmat, what is the wisdom to that that has been destined for you. Find that. The peace will enter into your heart. Not only that, you'll have more faith. Reject that and be upset and be angry. And that is the time that you may lose your faith and you may lose everything. Because the faith is the most important thing now in Islam. The faith is the most important thing. It is not the man and the woman who brings a child into this world. It is Allah who brings a child into this world. If the man is catching his faith to think that way, man or woman, the station will rise. Because that is a test, and there is a jihad, that is a struggle for you. And if you pass that test well, Allah will reward you endlessly. You may not have children here, but who knows what you're going to have in the hereafter. This world is just passing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bottom line, is saying, that so many Imams and Shaykhs, they don't want to say because they are scared from the West and the Western media. Allah is saying, understand that this world, your wives and your children and all your wealth, there is nothing but a confusion for you. It is a confusion for you. The man of faith will understand this. Are we saying that we should not have children, we should not get married, we should not go out and work? The unintelligent man, the man who is quick for slander and quick for telling lies and cheating and lying, he's going to come to this conclusion quickly. We cannot do anything if you want to do that. It just shows your own ignorance that shaitan has hooked you. Of course, we work. Of course, we marry. That's why we need to have a role model. If we don't have a role model of who to marry, how to marry, how to have uh, a family, how to raise our children, if we don't have guidelines, how to do this, 1400 years of guidelines we have. If we are not following that, then we are going to follow the guidelines that the television is offering us, that the magazines, that the books, that the talk shows that the kufr is going to offer us. Because now, when we look at the lifestyle of the Prophet, he did not let his wives, yes, and his children, or his grandchildren, to stand in the way of him and Allah. Yes. How many of us now, because of our family, and saying that we love our family, they stand between us and Allah, and we obey them. MashaAllah. When it comes to that, everyone is quick to quote ayat. Paradise is under the feet of the mothers. Paradise is under the feet of the mothers only for the mothers who are ahli paradise. Ahli jannat. Those mothers who are ahli dunya. Those mothers who are ahli jahannam. Those mothers who are ahli shaitan. And there are billions of mothers like this. Those mothers who are ahli hawa and nafs, that they are not caring if their sons and their daughters go out to have boyfriends and girlfriends and to wear short 
skirts and to go out to smoke, to drink, to go to clubs. They don't care for that. But once the son or the daughter starts covering up and going to masjids and going to zikirs and sawbats, they say, no, you must obey me because paradise is under my feet. Prophet is saying, you must obey me. Don't go. And the foolish, I'm speaking to you, the foolish sons and the daughters saying, I have to obey my mother. Upside down. Confusion. So, don't be confused. Yes, that time, maybe there is a hidden secret to that. Definitely there is a hidden secret. But I'm going to give you one more <laughs> thing that I'm going to say to you. Definitely you will not like it. But who knows, I may be surprised. If you're a mu'mina, you are not going to be surprised. You're not going to be upset. That's why in Islam, Islam is permitting the man to marry up to four wives. There's a reason. And it is a right. Uh, so, I'm not now saying <laughs> that your husband must marry another one or something. No. I'm just saying that Islam it is permitting the husband to marry four wives. And this is one of the conditions when it is allowed for the man to marry a second wife if the wife is not producing if the husband is not producing that's something else if you know medically what is happening then accept the takbir and inshallah rahman yes Allah will make it easy for you if you live in a Muslim uh, community if you live in a jamaat if you live in a Muslim village, these kinds of things, it didn't just happen yesterday. It's been happening for thousands of years, correct? You know, all days with our mothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers. Maybe we have some aunts. Maybe we have some sisters, some cousins who they don't have children. Well, everyone else, they have maybe two, three, four, in the old days, seven, eight, nine, ten children. They have. So they say, okay, you don't have child. I have a small one that I just have given birth. <laughs> you take him, you take care of him, isn't it? And that one will start taking care of that kid, building the community, making the community be strong. And you know that you are adopting the kid from your own family, not from outside, not from uh, a place where you are not understanding where the person is coming from, what lineage is coming from to. Evet.